having fun, smelling good, spending too much money on fractionated coconut oil. I love everybody because I love you. When you stood up, walked away barefoot, and the grass where you Good morning, every I love everybody because I love you. I'm in a very good mood this morning, mostly because my hair looks really good. I mean, just, just look at it. Now my face does not, but we got fake freckles on. I'm gonna sit back here and the illusion will be maintained. I should try and keep this intro short because we've got a lot to get through. <laughs> I want to do a perfume collection. I want to show you guys the goods. And I want to do the perfume tag, which is a combination of questions I've come up with and also questions from Reddit. So to preface this collection video, because it's a lot, just remember, I worked with Stereoplasm for a year. I was sent almost every fragrance that we made, except for ones that we forgot about. Um, I've also worked with Fentome and they sent me a lot of their stuff. And I've participated in perfume exchanges, and I bought some of it, and I've been given a lot of it, so this is a lot. It is not the biggest collection I've seen, but it's pretty big. So... It's gonna be a long video? Anyway, here is my perfume collection. It is vast. It's chunky. Let's just jump into it. Let's unpack this. <laughs> so this is actually a jewelry box that I uh, found and repainted and repurposed uh, to hold my stash. Hortus Noctis means Garden of the Night, which um, is just kind of a little thing I like made a zine that was kind of this theme. So anyway, I just, I wanted it to be kind of witchy, but not too spooky. Uh, so yeah, this is my main perfume box. So let's open her up. Wow. Okay, this is a bit, <laughs> a bit messy right now because I just received a ton of new perfume. This top layer is where I typically keep the stuff that's in current rotation. So I like to swap this stuff out if I get um, new things, which is what these two big packages things are uh, and also my favorite seasonal scents so these are two scents i like to wear in winter this is some new things an old fave some stuff i've been wanting to try out so this is kind of always changing but currently that's the top layer oh you thought that but no no there's two more layers okay so that lifts up and we've got my six mil, my larger size. All of these like rectangle bottles that you're seeing uh, and these little ones are all from Stereoplasm. So you can see that's most of my collection. Uh, this is just bigger bottles and again, stuff I'm using more, but to be honest, I've been so busy. I haven't really updated this. I probably should. These are some new things I'd like to try out. Okay, so then that's the top. And then there is also this drawer. Uh, again, these are like my my six mils. These just fit so nicely. <laughs> these two bottles are from Fentome, and they're just so beautiful. I actually want to display them, but my desk area is a bit crazy right now. And oftentimes, I have scents I almost exclusively wear together, so I just I keep them together, like these two, um, just because it's easier for me. I don't really wear them on their own. So that is the first box. Uh, it's my like most favorite current use new stuff transition stuff. All right, next. 
Next most frequently used is this little um, felt thing. I think it's from Ikea. So I keep this in my bedroom because it's got like my linen mists and stuff and I sometimes spray them on my pillow. Also has one of Richard's <laughs> scents. And this is where I keep my very small collection of EDPs. And then also some random jewelry, I guess. Uh, I've got some Solstice Scents fragrances. That was my first ever EDP. I've used so much. These bottles are just so beautiful. Uh, and again, I would love to have these out. And I do normally during the season. This is a summer scent. This is an autumn scent, so I'm not wearing them a ton. And same with Pyromancy 1692, very sleek, really sexy bottles. Uh, so I would love to have those displayed, but right now they just live in here. And because I have so few, if I want to wear these scents, it's just easier to keep them separate. And then I've also got some roller balls of my like ultimate holy grail top favorite scent combo, which is uh, Basilica and Tachiba. I wear them together. I'll talk more about this later, but anyway, I keep these in here too because I have multiples of all of those. And that's what lives in this little felt container in the bedroom. I've got these two boxes. These are kind of housing my like off-season stuff and uh, stuff I just got in an exchange or again, more off-season stuff. I do need a better storage system, but this is what we have. All right, I'll start with this one. Uh, it's just a candle. <laughs> I have backups of one scent. Again, I'll talk more about this later. Um, these are little samples from Stereoplasm. I used to give them away as PR and stuff. Now I just kind of keep them and give them to friends or in exchanges. Uh, what's in here? I think these are... Really, this is just chaos. I don't really know why there's a box in a box, but again, okay, we've got more tiny boxes. <laughs> you can tell the uh, bottles with the white on top. This is when I was foolish enough to believe that I could keep track of what perfumes I was getting and was painting and then writing the names and they just, they flake off super easily and I clearly did not continue it. Just more bottles. <laughs> Lots of uh, seasonal stuff. Really, I'm running out of space, so these had to go somewhere. All right, and then the last box. This was like a games box that we found. Uh, this is just more bits and bobs. I have some postcards from Phantom that I was using in a video and also they're just super pretty. I wanted to keep them. I recently did a exchange on Reddit and most of this stuff is from the exchange and I just wanted to keep it separate because I don't know what's in it. Like I haven't tried them all and um, if I put them into my regular collection they'll just like get lost. And then more <laughs> Stereoplasm stuff. That that's my entire perfume collection. Should we get a family photo? I think we should. All right, well, that is <clears throat> almost every bottle of perfume. <gasps> wait, no, wait, hold on. Stay here, stay, you stay here now every bottle of perfume. Oh, I've never been confronted with it all at once before. I, th I feel like my little hands really show. Hey guys, my stash. All right, well, um, that's the collection tour and let's get on to the tag. But first, I have to clean all this up. So let's try one of those cool transitions. I mean, that kind of worked. All right, back to sitting down Nora. <gasps> Movie magic. That is my collection. I didn't even do that thing where you just like, you know, pretend to pause and then 
keep filming in the same angle I actually just stopped and like did the whole collection and I'm now faced with how much perfume I truly have it was my job okay all right let's do the tag I did have the foresight to write down some of my own answers in terms of like perfume because I need to think about it because I have so many but I did not have the foresight to go and find said perfumes and have them ready to show you it's fine let's just see if I know where they are maybe we'll see question one is when did you first get into indie perfumes and why I actually got into this whole world because I had lost my very favorite perfume. It had been discontinued and I was trying to replace it. And I was on Reddit one day and some, some shop was going out of business or they were closing and they were like resellers for uh, a bunch of different indie product. And there was this one perfume called Witch's Cottage. All right, it's from Solstice Scents. In fact, I have it right here now and it just sounded unbelievable okay not just how it would smell which sounded great but imagine someone be like oh you smell good what are you wearing and you're like which is cottage <laughs> be my best friend please that's what i would be thinking and it was just it sounded like the coolest thing ever however it was sold out so i managed to find the website that you know sold the actual scent they were also sold out. But then I, you know, stumbled into all of the other amazing scents that they have with equally amazing names. Turns out I actually don't love this perfume. It's nice, it's uh, very pleasant and I do wear it, but it's not like my ultimate thing. Unsurprisingly, you know, you buy one sample pack from the one house and think this scent is perfect, but it needs something else. I'm gonna mix it. They don't have anything I want. I'm gonna try a different house. Three years later, 200 bottles of perfume later and we're here. So that's how I got started. My first ever full-size perfume. My first full-size perfume was from that house, Solstice Scents, and it was called Sycamore Chai, and it sounded amazing. It has uh, cardamom, ginger, tea, vanilla, soft cinnamon, ginger pumpkin rolls with marshmallow creme. Sounds great, right? So I got this bottle, and it was really good. It was a little bit too sweet, so at the same time as I ordered the full-size, I also ordered this one called Basilica. I, I didn't have a sample of this, it just sounded really nice. Uh, so Basilica has labdanum, vanilla, frankincense, rosewood, myrrh, hinkoi wood, sandalwood, and galvanum. So it sounded really woody, and sycamore chai was not woody enough. So I thought, I'll mix them, it'll be perfect. Let me tell you, the scent mix was great when I got both of them. Um, but sycamore chai actually gave me a rash on my neck, as lots of perfumes do now, I realize. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. So I don't have that one, which is my first full size. However, I loved Basilica so much that when I found the perfect mix for it, I, I did not want to lose it. I was like terrified that it would go out of stock. So for a long time, I couldn't get Basilica. And I was like, this is my holy grail scent. This is the only perfume I want, LOL. So when it finally came back in stock, I did not want to lose it again because I had waited like a year to get a new bottle. I bought five bottles. And then like four months later, I started working at Stereoplasm. Um, so I have used one of them again, but I'm, it's gonna take me a while. Luckily, I, I do love it, so we're fine. And then my first like spray perfume, which they're very expensive, so they're quite a big commitment, was uh, Wilcox's. It is a beautiful bottle. It's a great scent. So Wilcox's is a very dry, herbal, um, kind of like witch, actually it smells more like a witch's cottage than I think witch's cottage does. Witch's cottage kind of smells like a fairy tale witch, like who bakes a lot and like isn't that evil. Um, and Wilcox's smells like, like an actual witch and I really love it. It's described as being a very herbal blend featuring dry woods, fresh sage, rosemary, lavender, chamomile, dry woody spice, nutmeg, mugwort, sweet annie, holy basil, cypress, and cedar. Wow, that's a lot. And as you can see, I'm about halfway through. It's pretty exciting. That was my first big perfume. Question three, uh, what is your newest perfume? My newest set of perfumes actually came from 
pulp fragrances. I just did a little Instagram video uh, reviewing some of their scents. Like it literally feels, it feels like this. That's what this feels like. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm overwhelmed with how nice this smells. It's a brand new Canadian company. I am so impressed with what they've come out with so far. Great aesthetic and amazing fragrances. But these are my newest perfumes. Question four, uh, what house do you have the most perfume from? <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it is Stereoplasm. As you saw, almost all of my perfume is from Stereoplasm. All of this is, all of this is, most of those are, most of that is, I would say about 85 to 90% of my perfume is from Stereoplasm. I think that my bottles of Stereoplasm perfume, maybe not bottles, but like number of scents is over 200. I was at one point keeping track. Yeah, I'm fully loaded with Stereoplasm. Question five is, what is your biggest perfume pet peeve? Which I have a lot of, and <laughs> I wrote them all down. All right, my pet peeves are leather notes that turn into plastic on my skin. This doesn't happen like a ton, but I find anything described as like new leather um, or like black leather, it really just turns to plastic. <laughs> Another pet peeve, and this is no shade to the house at all, but maybe a little bit, is um, Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, their website. <laughs> organization. I really like their stuff. I have a bunch of their scents, but I've never ordered from the website. I've only ever uh, traded or bought them from the uh, marketplace on Reddit. I've never purchased from the website. They're actually one of the first houses I like found and I was so overwhelmed I almost gave up. So the scent listing, it'll be like tea party perfume. There'll be this much text on the website and then at the very bottom in like italics it will say the notes of the perfume and that's my other pet peeve I have written down when the notes aren't easy to find I it, I just it drives me bonkers and then what kind of ties into that is <laughs> if the notes are easy to find but um, they're very conceptual I'm getting a little better as I am you know more experienced in the in the perfume industry I can kind of decipher like what does electricity smell like what does jade smell like what does a misty morning smell like you know when I was beginning I was like what the fuck are these notes what is fear what what is that smell it really bothers me when the labels peel off 1692 their 10 mil bottles are beautiful they're great um, this that decorative tape you're seeing that is not part of the bottle design. I had to add that because the the labels just like their their corners just peel up like crazy. Only on these ones, only on the big bottles. Um, still worth it. Amazing fragrances, but it's it's kind of silly. Every time I get a new bottle, I have to like tape down the sides. And those are all my pet peeves. Probably I probably have more. I love to complain, but that's it for now. Moving on. I'm in the mood for some tea. Let's do a little more drama and do a controversial opinion. I don't want to shade anybody. Uh, the name of a perfume is like super important to me. I have purchased scents that I don't really know if I'll like because it has an amazing name. I'm this close to buying Cap of Gnome. It's, it's like a hazelnut creamy note. Sounds like something I would not wear, but I want it. Oh, I want it. I also really want to buy Sleepy Ghost. They just have the cutest names, and I, I would love to be the kind of person who wears Sleepy Ghost, but I think it's got lavender, and I don't love lavender. If a perfume has a bad name, I probably would not buy it, even if it sounds amazing. This ties into my second controversial opinion, which is sex-themed perfumes. Now, if you're not like in the community, this might be very confusing, and you'd be like, why would there be sex-themed perfumes? Because this industry is full of a lot of fabulous, witchy, wonderful women, and men as well, and all genders of people and non-gendered people, okay? We accept everybody here. This community is full of a lot of alternative people, and sexual liberty is a part of that, and I think it's great. But for me, if someone says like, I love your perfume, what are you wearing? I'm going, oh, I'm wearing f me with I can't. To put that in the video. Oh, me? I'm just wearing my and my I can't put that in the video either. This perfume, this is called 
to him on my there's just a lot of like <laughs> masturbation and sex themed perfumes and i'm sure they smell great but i just i will use it if it's given to me and if i really like it i might repurchase it but i'm very like hesitant to buy something that i wouldn't want to tell somebody the name of and i'm like super sex positive i love it go for it but it's just not something i want to like <laughs> advertise i don't know more power to anyone who wears them or makes them but it's just not for me but you do you you do anybody you want to as long as you have consent all right my next question is actually about perfume this is uh what scent do you wear to lift your mood when you're feeling grumpy what do you wear if i'm sad and want to feel like comforted and cozy i will go for something more gourmand more like foodie and warm uh, there are also two scents from the uh, La Vite Leche collection from Stereoplasm, which is a collection that I got to design after I came back from a trip to Italy. One is called Cacio Frizzante. This is a lovely, uh, like, lemony, ricotta, creamy, zesty, fresh scent. So I also love wearing that one. But when I'm feeling down and I want to feel, like, warm and comforted, I love wearing La Tazza, which is, like, a little ceramic cup that you have like espresso out of. I can't find the bottle right now, um, but it's it's actually cappuccino, which I did not expect to like, um, but it's got croissant and cappuccino and it's just this like big hug. It's so comforting and I love wearing that one. Next question, question number eight. What makes you feel nostalgic? Hands down, it is this perfume I mentioned before called Basilica. When I first smelled this, guys, this was like an emotional experience. I, I wrote a review about this. But my mom's a minister. I grew up in churches, like hours before church began. We would have to, you know, my sister and I would go to the church with my mom. She would prepare for the day. We would scurry around like little church mice and just explore every nook and cranny. We knew the churches we grew up in so well. We were like little ghosts. It was amazing. Um, but when I smelled this perfume, it it smells like my childhood like it makes me it makes me like well up it smells so much like a church it's just beautiful and that place was like i'm not i'm not religious she just made us go to church because she didn't want to pay for a babysitter and you know now i'm really happy she did because i have very fond memories of falling asleep in the pews and the dusty carpet and candles and everything and this that this it's this scent in a bottle and I it, I like cherish it so much That's why I love perfume. But anyway, that's this what this makes me fucking nostalgic Question number nine is what single note is your soulmate? <laughs> this was one of the um, suggestions and I love this question and Absolutely hands down without a fucking doubt. I sounded super Canadian right there without a fucking doubt hey there bye It is tomato leaf Oh baby, I got so obsessed with tomato leaf. I don't know why. It's just it's like it's like peppery and and the, like green and herbaceous and springy. There's just something so delightful about tomato leaf. I don't know how it started, but I adore it. But yeah, I would put tomato leaf in everything. This is what scent would your favorite character wear? Now this is very hard because I have many favorite characters. I love books. I'm a, I'm picking from books here. I'm not gonna pick from films. So two of my favorite books are called Wise Child and The Thirteen Clocks. I love them both. So the fragrance I have picked for Juniper, who, um, as a little preface for anybody who has not read the book, which is probably most people, it's not very popular. Uh, Juniper is a Doran. She's a Scottish or Gaelic like herb witch um who i believe is alive in like i don't know what year it is like the maybe like the 15th century i i don't know i should know this it's like my favorite book okay it just says a remote scottish village it was published in the 80s 87 but it's it's i think it's like an old timey you know like medieval sort of thing she lives in the cutest little cottage on the top of the hill outside of the town she has a donkey named tilly she has a great garden she makes her own dandelion wine like this woman is like my idol anyway i think that she would smell like this perfume this is called mandrake it is from stereoplasm it's part of the halloween collection and i got to write the notes for it cinnamon 
and mulch and wood and magic. And that is exactly what juniper would smell like. I like this for a character because it's feasibly something that she could actually like create out of things from her garden. You know, she could make cinnamon and oil maybe, I don't know, can you get cinnamon in medieval Scotland? Probably not. But she could, you know, make something spicy and I imagine she has dirt on her hands from the garden, yada yada. Mandrake, one of my favorite perfumes. What scent did you think you would hate but ended up loving? It is called Vanilla Leaf and this was like a vanilla, banana vanilla collection that um, Stereoplasm came out with. This is so weird. It's got banana, spicy vanilla, nightshade, and hot banana peppers. How weird is that? Hot banana peppers? Yeah. This is actually very weird and cool and it's like <laughs> spicy sweet banana candy. I don't want to tell you. It's fun. I like it. Okay, question 12 is what note is inescapable and you can't avoid it? <laughs> um, I would say marshmallow I feel like is everywhere and it can be really nice but it, for me at least, I definitely amp like sweet vanilla things. So if I have a perfume that's got like a spicy component and a sweet component, my skin will just eat up the spice and I will project sweet vanilla and it's not really what I love. I like dirty, spicy, herbal, green shit. And as nice as it is to smell like a cupcake sometimes, um, I also want to smell like a forest witch, okay? Next question, I promise we're almost done, <laughs> is what perfume has the best name? And again, I've spoken about this. I love perfumes with great names. I've written a few down that I actually don't own, but I love the name of. One of them is Cap of Gnome. One of them is Cardamom B. The cutest name in the world. Cardamom B. And of course, we have to mention the perfume house with the best names. These are like, these are like Panic at the Disco names. Uh, Death and Floral just has the funniest names. They're cheeky, like for example, there's one called Half Hoping to Be Eaten by Bear. There's one called The Library Burning Down With Us. I tip my hat to you, Death and Floral. So the last question, we're here, we're finally here. I say that as if I didn't come up with these questions myself and I'm doing this of my own accord and no one is asking me to, but that's fine. Last question is, any advice for newbies into indie perfume and the whole community? And I would say, despite all you've seen here, <laughs> try not to be overwhelmed. Um, there is so much to choose from and once you fall down the rabbit hole, you're just gonna like, you're gonna lose it. It's gonna be crazy. So I would say, tip one, don't get overwhelmed and keep it simple. As you try things and as you figure out what you like and what you don't like, it will become much, much easier. Uh, and also don't feel like you have to try something from every single house. I would also say sample packs are your friend. My biggest recommendation, if you're planning on getting into it or if you think that you're going to go a little overboard, keep notes. I have an Excel spreadsheet. I do. I write down what perfumes I have from which houses and what I thought about them, what the notes are, what the names are, and it's incredibly helpful. Especially because I'll smell something, try it out for a while, don't like it, sell it, whatever, give it away, and then, you know, months later we'll be like, I wonder what I thought about that. I want to buy it. No. Don't. Look. Go read your notes. Otherwise you'll end up like me. Participate in the community, read the reviews, yeah, just start somewhere. Just start somewhere and have fun. Ultimately, isn't that, isn't that the most important part? Having fun, smelling good, spending too much money on fractionated coconut oil. Hope you smell great today. And that's it! I'm done! Richard! You gotta come here! Please? I'll make you a hot chocolate if you come answer my question. Fine. He can't say no to me. Actually, he just really likes the hot chocolate I make. You're very close. Okay. This is my boyfriend. What do you think about all of my perfumes? I think they're excessive and insane. <laughs> I can't tell the difference between any of them. Do you have a favorite of my perfumes? 
Um, you can just describe it. I'll probably know the one you're talking about. The bedtime one. Oh, I know which one you're talking about, Brady. The bedtime one. Rose? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Richard likes Rose oh. and... Jasmine. Jasmine. A very masculine man. Yeah, but they're cool. They're flowers with thorns on them. Badass. Kick me. Conditioning you. It's true. I actually, I actually thought Rose was kind of gross. That's really rude. Well, it's like so old She's the best part of Titanic, so... <laughs> was she? No. Terrible movie, to be honest. You like this one. This is the curry perfume. <laughs> Yeah, it smells like a, the like a curry mix. Like there's like nutmeg thing. It's, it's cardamom. It's delicious. Oh, oh it's so old. Oh my god, it makes me sad. This is the um, scent that Richard had when we first started dating when I was 16 and he was 17. And <laughs> an older man. <laughs> we dated for two months. We did it for like a month and a half and then I moved to Denmark. And we used to send letters to each other. And you bet your ass we would spray our own perfumes on them. Anyway, I remember like sobbing over, over letters that smelled like this. And it, I literally couldn't smell it for like a year after I got back because it would like make, it was like <laughs> Pavlovian scary. response. I would just be sad. <laughs> All right. That's it. Can you hear the bumblebee swarm watching your arm? This perfume, this is called Fondue Hammer Time on my head. When you call.